I just say that it's been an honour to lead this group of players, staff, and the board of directors, and everyone connected with the football club. Okay, because for me, when I come in here, this club was going one way, and that was into the Conference South. Okay, so credit to you because there's not been a lot of change. Remember, enjoy tonight and tomorrow <laughs> and Monday <laughs> and Tuesday. <laughs> Leighton Orient have been relegated. It's absolute heartbreak for Leighton Orient. The demise and destruction of a club by one man. Have we got a club? Or are we going to go into liquidation? On June 22nd, when it got announced that Nigel had taken it over. And I mean, I'm a fan. I mean, we want to win. The overwhelming sense of relief that we were going to be OK and that actually this season we'd have a club to come and support. We are very lucky to have found Kent. It's an interesting blend of family and religion, this football thing that you guys have. <laughs> you know, we had a lot of things that Martin Lee had to take on. When I come back in, it was, it was still a shock. What was a huge amount of mess, so we had no bank account, we literally had absolutely nothing to be able to operate with apart from some exceptionally good stuff. We bought Justin in and it instantly had, had an impact. It was uh, first and foremost about you know, uh, steadying a ship that was real going off course. You know, off the back of a winless run which was beyond 15 games, to turn it around as quickly as they did I think was, uh, was testament to them. Well, it's our second season in the National League. The season as a whole, amazing. It's a roller coaster, that's why we love Leighton Orient. Towards that back post, and it's in! From the start of going unbeaten in the first 13 games. Yeah! I have a particular way of expressing myself, shall we say. And then we had sort of, you know, a little bit of dip with injuries and whatever. So that was the first time we had experienced back-to-back -back defeats in the league in over a year. Made everybody, you know, refocus. You know, no one plans that you're going to win seven games on the spin. People say, oh, boy, that's the players always come and say hello to you. I say, I don't know. There's a chance for two! And it is yes! Yes! That bombing, they got into our psyche a little bit. Half time at the Eastley game, oh my god, yes, it was all sort of like doom and gloom, oh, we've blown it and it's never going to happen. I like dealing with low crosses. When it went in, I just, I can't explain it, I knew we'd gone to the game. That night for me was the night that I thought, okay, we're going to be pushing. That Sutton goalkeeper, every late Norway fan will be buying him a beer at the end of the season. When, he, when I saw him picking the apple cage and the volley it, he took another kick up and I thought, this is my chance, I've got to go out and stab this. Penalty given! I look at the balls on the side, I saw 89, 18, I was thinking, well, this could be the last kick of the game, but it's all on my shoulders here. I'm thinking, you've got to bury this. Yes, he scores it! Just keep pushing, just keep going. Keeper stays on his line and the head is in. And Leighton Orient have taken one almighty step towards the National League title. We, we're daring and we're dreaming. We can do this. Come on! Solly Holm know that if they can win this, they would go level on points with the leaders, Orient with one game to play.
Orient, if all, everything goes their way today, could well be crowned champions. The, the Solly Hole season that they've had is, is it's a fairy tale of it. No one, no one in a million years would have expected them to really maybe even be in the, the top quarter. Yeah, just don't write them off. Don't write anyone off. You know, I mean, everyone on their day can beat anyone. Just over half an hour gone. Osborne, good save by Brill. Solly Hole wasn't a game for the purist, it, it really wasn't. It's jostling for position in the box here as it's sent in. And that was close. I didn't enjoy the game, I'll be honest. Um, one that it was, it wasn't a very attractive game as far as I was concerned. Ball with the run into the box, and the cross, and it's saved by Brill, and it's just off the line. So close to an opener for Solihull. Brophy's done well, and here's McCauley Bond. Oh, brilliant save by Boone. What a good stop that was. We get into a stage of the season where it is difficult to in, enjoy those 90 minutes because there's so much at stake. It's a deep delivery. But we managed it, and it's games like that that kind of helped define the season. All square, it finishes there in the West Midlands. And to get the point away at Solihull was tremendous and just shows you the kind of hard work that Justin's instilled in the squad. They're still going now at the Peninsula Stadium. Salford desperately seeking an equaliser in what remains against Files. Were you keeping up to date with the Salford game? No, no, I wasn't aware. and I, and I you know, I made that clear that we can't affect anything that goes on elsewhere. Um, you know, we can't be reliant on anyone else's results, we can only concentrate and affect our own. There will be no official title celebrations today for Leighton Orient, but as it stands, they will go into the final day with a three-point lead on both at Solihull and Salford. Well, I, th I was thinking this in the week, actually. Will in my life ever again I experience Leighton Orient winning the league. You know, I, there, there's not many fans out there who have experienced it. I find it very hard to, to, to talk about it at the moment, you know, at this football club, with it being my first real experience of any type of success. I've tried not to think about it. It's now coming all into plan for us. Like, at least what everyone deserves at this club here because it's, it's a football league club and to where it's fallen to I think it deserves just for the staff, the players and even the fans around, everyone supported us, it deserves to be back in football league and, and it's only down to us, no one else can help us now, it's just us now on the pitch to go and win the league for us. So much hard work has gone into it, huge sacrifices made by players, staff, everyone connected with the football club, fans, because this could be, as a club, the, one of the biggest moments in our history so far. You know, I'm nervous. God knows what they're feeling. So it's up to their professionalism now and Justin's professionalism, I think, to you know, do what we've done all season. And that is just get out there, do your job, be professional, and please just take us to the promised land of the, uh, the Football League. Almost tears already. It's just ridiculous. It's just mad the emotions that are going through. And to me personally, it will uh, it will put a line under the the non-league story for Leighton Orient. I was, I'll always be Leighton Orient, whatever the league. It doesn't matter if we played over Anthony Marshes, I'd be there. It'll 
put a line at the end of our former regime, even though we've been two years with our current owners. We'll be back where we really need to be and uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to the party. I'll be on the pitch. I know they put a warning out that says do not get on the pitch. I will see you in the centre circle after the game. There is nothing stopping me getting on the pitch. I apologise, already apologising. Uh, and then I'll, I don't know what's going to happen. I honestly don't. But I told the missus, don't expect me home till well late. We would like to get this done and won as soon as possible. But at the same time, if it means that we have to go to the 95th minute in Leighton Orient true fashion, then, then so be it. The only word I will probably say is it's exciting and I think come three o'clock on that, on the last game, I think uh, you'll have a pretty good idea how much it means to me. Ready to be champions. Leighton Orient are promoted. The O's are heading back where history says they belong. You've got a memory now that can last a lifetime, that you can share with the generations that were there and the generations that are still to come. But let's create that next memory. Come on! 49 years without a league title. Well, let's not wait 49 years. Let's not wait 49 months. Let's try and get that. Momentum is a massive thing and, and continue to believe, continue with that support and yeah, really continue to get behind this absolutely fantastic club. This has an extra special tinge to it, as far as I'm concerned, because you know, we nearly lost the club, and, and to now be just two years, just two years from where we were to where we are now, um, it's not a fairy tale by any stretch of the imagination. It's through a lot of good work, hard work, a lot of good decision making. People have been coming to watch the club in, in great numbers, greater numbers than when we were arguably pushing to go into the championship. You don't know what you've got till it's gone. So, you know, and with the fact that we were nearly gone, and the fact that this nearly wasn't around anymore it's been it's inspiring really what you can do Thanks again for watching guys, it's been an absolute pleasure making this series and of course sponsoring this brilliant football club. Everyone here has taken us in like one of their own and we've met some amazing characters along the way. If you've missed any of the series please check them out on our YouTube channel and subscribe for more football content. For now here's to a new chapter in Orient's history heading back to the Football League on the roads to where they really belong.